in the game. Oh, you don't know how happy I am. Cynthia Cooper Dyke. Oh my goodness. Robin, uh, you don't know how happy uh, I am. First of uh, all, I just want to say this. I'm in the game. Do you understand? <laughs> to be not on the bench, to not be watching on the sidelines, to be actually in the game. <laughs> Who could ask for more? No, no. And you, you deserve it. And to be back, Cynthia, at your alma mater, USC, yeah. what does that mean to you? Well, you know, it's, it's so cliche is to say it's a dream come true. But when I remember the, the battles and my path, my journey through high school to USC and then on to the professional ranks, um, it is just a dream come true. I remember in, in the beautiful book that you wrote talking about your life and you said how you constantly have obstacles placed in front of you and that you love that. I love it. That, you, you, that it makes you. Yeah. So what do you say to that young person, especially a young girl, faced with a lot of challenges similar to what you went through and they see where you are now. How do you talk to them about setting goals for themselves? Well, I tell them two things first. I, I, I say, get up. When you get knocked down, get up. It doesn't matter how slowly you get up. It just matters that you get up and that you push forward. I say that you can. You can be successful. You can achieve your goals. And once you achieve those goals, you can set new ones. It's OK. It's OK to be great. It's okay to fight for something that you believe in, that you want, that you're passionate about. I say it's okay to fight, that you can do it because I did it. And no one expected me to do it. I know. But I did it. And I always believed that I could. I like to say you were the part of the original big three. You, Cheryl Swoops, and Tina Thompson playing for the Comets. How you alluded to, you made the transition from international play. And what did it mean for you to come back and play on home soil, the home court? Yeah, Robin, it meant, it meant everything. I mean, can you imagine my mom had not gotten a chance to see me play in like 10, 11 years? It was special to me to come back to the WNBA and be at my best, even though I was 33 as a rookie. You've been very brave. You've, you've forged your own way. Who are the people that inspired you and that were your mentors? Uh, probably my mom. My mom was my biggest mentor. I mean, I just saw her persevere through so much. And she just kept going. And she raised eight kids by herself. And she fought cancer. And she was probably the first person that taught me, no matter what it is you want to do, you can go after it. You can do it. We asked ESPNW, have a lot of followers on Twitter and Facebook, ask for questions for Coop. All right. And there's some good ones. Therese wants to know, where do you see the WNBA in 10 years? And you have quite a perspective, Coop, since you were part of the inaugural yeah. season in those first years. So where do you see it 10 years from now? When I was growing up, we didn't have a professional league. So we didn't really prepare ourselves. I think now you're starting to see the Brittany Griners, the Skylar Diggins. You're starting to see Elena Adela Dawn and and, and how fantastic of an athlete and player they are because they were able to prepare five years sooner because they had that dream. They had a vision. They were able to focus on something like the WNBA. So I see it alive and well. These young women are benefiting from Title IX. Absolutely. From the day they were born, unlike yes, us, absolutely. they were encouraged. They were taught how to play. Yeah, they had opportunities. Opportunities, and they've, yeah. really, they've really run with it and so proud of what we're seeing right now. Absolutely. Proud of the foundation that you laid. Rebecca wants to know, what was your favorite memory of playing in the WNBA? We were playing New York, and we were down by three. And I came down with about 24 seconds to play, and I knocked down an NBA three-pointer that sent the game into overtime. We ended up winning that game in that championship. Yeah. That's probably the biggest one because we had so many obstacles and so many reasons to fail. But as a team and as a city and as a, as a program, we came together and we were able to, to pull out that, that third championship in spite of Kim passing away a couple days before the playoffs started. So that's probably, probably my fondest memory. I remember that well, Coop. Yeah. And just the emotion. But you had to do that for Kim Parra because Absolutely. she was a little general out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't have had it any other yeah. way. Yeah. Well, you have a lot of fond memories. And kudos. Um, 
Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, which is fantastic, but also going into the Naismith Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. Words can't even describe how honored, how humbled I was to just be among the greats and to be recognized as one of the best. For me, that was special. That was special because it made me remember all of the times the boys wouldn't let me play. <laughs> it made me remember when they wouldn't let me in the game. What's next? What's next is winning a national championship for USC, at USC, as a head coach. I need to achieve that goal. That's my next goal. And then, well, can we get a little raise the roof? Because oh, you, you know, know, oh, you know oh, what we're going to oh, do next. Yeah, I know. Then oh, we'll yeah. be doing Absolutely. this. Oh, oh, oh. Absolutely. It, I, I could sit here and talk to you and talk to you, but I want to say thank you for your contributions, your continued contributions, and I wish you all the best. And, yes, you still got game, you. and you are in the game. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thanks for having me.